Thank you both. Lieutenant Colonel Vinman, I think the follow-up question that my colleague from New York did not ask you but is relevant for everyone at home, isn't it true that the Department of Defense had certified that the anti-corruption requirements of Ukraine had been met when the hold was put on by the President? That is correct. Now, Mr. Jordan suggested that the President did something none of us expected by releasing that call transcript. You listened to the call, is that right, Lieutenant Colonel? That is. Ms. Williams, you also listened to the call, is that right? Yes. Fair to say, Ms. Williams, a lot of other people at the White House listened to the call or read the transcript? I can't characterize how many. I believe there were four, four five or six of us in the, the listening room at the time. And the transcript was distributed to others, is that right? I wasn't part of that process, but that's my understanding. So the president is asking for us and his defenders to give him a gold star because a number of people listened to the call or saw the call transcript and then he released it. The difference, of course, between this and, say, his one-on-one -on -me one -on meeting in Helsinki with Vladimir Putin was there. It was a one-on-one -on -one meeting and he took the notes from the interpreter so none of us could see it. The point being, the president had no choice but to release a call that everyone had seen. Now, you've been asked to also characterize what exactly legally all of this means. And Mr. Ratcliffe pointed out that no one had used the term bribery uh, in our depositions. And Ms. Williams, you're not a lawyer, are you? I'm not, no. Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, are you a lawyer? The lawyer's back there. The lawyer's your brother, right? No. Born 20 seconds after you, is that what you said? Nine minutes. Nine minutes after you, <laughs> yes. You're the older brother. Yeah, lifetime of wisdom there. Now, I want to give you a, a hypothetical here. Suppose you have a shooting victim and the police respond after the victim uh, is doing a little bit better and they ask the victim, well, tell us what happened. And the victim says, well, someone came up to my car, shot into the car, hit me in the shoulder, hit me in the back, hit me in the neck. Miraculously, I survived, but I can identify, you know, who the person is that uh, pulled the trigger. And the police say, okay, you were shot, you know who it is, but shucks. You didn't tell us that this was an attempted murder, so we're going to have to let the person go. Is that how it works in our justice system, that unless victims or witnesses identify the legal theories of a case, we just let people off the hook? Is that how it works, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman? I'm not an attorney, but it doesn't seem so. I don't think your brother would think so uh, either. Ms. Williams, Vice President Pence was described to our committee by Mr. Morrison as a, quote, voracious reader of his intelligence read book. And after the April 21 call with President Zelensky, you put a transcript of that call in the Vice President's read book. Is that right? That's correct. And then the Vice President called President Zelensky two days later. Is that right? That's correct. And you told us in the deposition that he stuck pretty faithfully to what President Trump had said in that April 21 call. Is that right? I believe his remarks were consistent, but he also spoke on other issues as well, including anti-corruption. And you would describe the, pre the vice president as somebody who would make follow-up calls to world leaders after the president had done so. Is that right? He has on occasion. It's not a normal practice. It depends on the situation. And in that case, he stuck to President Trump's talking points. I would say that I provided talking points for the April 23rd call for the vice president, which included discussion of the, uh, President Zelensky's inauguration, which President Trump had also discussed with President Zelensky. But I would say the Vice President discussed other issues with President Zelensky as well. And as was stated earlier, the President sets the foreign policy for the United States. Is that right? Absolutely. And you told us that after the July 25 call between President Trump and President Zelensky, that you put the call transcript in Vice President Pence's intelligence briefing book. Is that right? I ensured it was there. My colleagues prepare the book, but yes. So let's. Flash forward to September 1. Vice President Pence meets with President Zelensky. Is that right? That's correct. You're there. Yes. And President Zelensky with Vice President Pence, they talk about a lot of things, but you will agree that Vice President Pence did not bring up the Bidens. Is that correct? That's correct. He did not. He did not bring up investigations. No. Is one reasonable explanation that although Vice President Pence will do a lot of things for President Trump, that he was not willing to bring up investigations in Biden's because he thought it was wrong? I'm not in a position to speculate. We had not discussed those particular investigations in any of the preparatory sessions with the vice president. But you didn't not, bring it up with the Ukrainians after the July 25 call, right? He did not in that meeting, no. And you did not either? No. 
And Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, did you ever ask the Ukrainians to do what President Trump was asking them to do after the July 25 phone call? I, I did not. I didn't render any opinion on uh, what was asked uh, in the 25. Thank you. Yield back. Mr. Hirsch.